Hey folks, this is another video in a series that aspires to teach Google Apps Scripts spreadsheet app to beginners. In previous videos, we learned how to access workbooks, create copies, create workbooks from scratch, access worksheets, extract data, dynamically reference ranges, read, write, read and write two sheets, as well as to append data. We're going to resume by navigating to the files module where we will be creating a new script file. This video is going to teach you how to add and remove rows and columns from a sheet. So we're going to call it I underscore add underscore remove. We're going to hit enter. We'll change the name of our function to add capital R remove and we will save our project. We're going to select line two. We'll hit enter once. Two slashes are on our keyboard with a space. And we will begin by accessing the workbook that we want to modify. We're going to hit enter and tab. We're going to declare a variable called WB, which will be set to spreadsheet app. We're going to be using one of three dot methods, which will be dependent upon your circumstances. I'm using a bound app script which means that the workbook that I am looking to modify is the same workbook that created this script file. If you're attempting to modify a workbook that your app script was not created from, then you're going to need to use .openbyid or .openbyurl. If you are using a bound app script like I am, then you can use the get active spreadsheet method with an open parentheses. It doesn't take any arguments, so we're gonna hit the right arrow on our keyboard and add a semicolon. We're gonna hit enter twice, left arrow twice, two slashes on the keyboard and space, and now we will access the sheet we want to modify. So we're gonna hit enter and tab, and we're gonna declare a variable of sheet, which will be set equal to wb.getSheet by name with an open parentheses. It takes a single argument, that needs to be structured as a string. So that means you need to use single quotes or double quotes. It doesn't matter what you use, just make sure that you're consistent with whatever you've been using to this point in the project. I've been using single quotes, so I will enter them now. We're gonna to go to the sheet that we wanna modify. We're going to select um, the sheet tab name, or you can just note it and then uh, type it or paste it into the get sheet by name. Uh, function. We're going to hit the right arrow on our keyboard twice, add a semicolon, hit enter twice, hit the left arrow on your keyboard twice, two slashes for a comment, and now we will define a, the last row in the sheet. So we'll hit enter and tab, and we'll declare a variable called last capital R row, which will be set equal to sheet dot get capital L last capital R row. Open parentheses, hit the right arrow on your keyboard, and add a semicolon. Get last row is a function that returns the last row in your sheet that has any kind of data entry in it. The technical way of describing it is that get last row returns the last row with non-null values. So even if you hit enter and add a bunch of spaces in there, that is con considered non-null because there is data entry even if it's not a text or a number character. Uh, so get last row is going to return, in my case, row nine. So I'm going to hit enter two times, add two slashes for a comment, and I'm going to add some logging. I'm going to hit enter and tab. I'm going to do logger.log, open parentheses, last capital R row, hit the right arrow on your keyboard, and add a semicolon. So when I hit run, you can see that it returns the number nine. Uh, I'm going to hit the uh, resume on line 13 and hit enter twice and the left arrow on my keyboard four times. I'm going to add two slashes for a comment and now I'm going to define the max row in the sheet. I hit enter and tab and I'm going to declare a variable called um, max capital R row which will be set equal to sheet dot get capital M max rows open parentheses I'm going to hit the right arrow on my keyboard and add a semicolon. Max rows returns the last row in the sheet or the max row in the sheet regardless of data entry. 
So in my sheet, I only have 10 rows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add 1,000 rows to the bottom of it. So now I have 1,010 rows. And the last row with data is number nine. So when I go back to my script, I hit enter twice, two slashes for a comment, and I'm going to add some logging. I'm gonna hit enter and tab, and I'm gonna do logger.log, open parentheses, max capital R row. I'll hit the right arrow on my keyboard and add a semicolon. So now when I run it, you'll see that I'm gonna get a nine for my last row, and I'm gonna get 1,010 for my max row. So the thing that we're gonna do here is we are going to remove all the blank rows underneath our data, and then eventually we're gonna do the same thing with the columns. So what we're gonna do is go back to our script, hit enter twice, hit the left arrow on our keyboard four times, add two slashes for a comment, and now we will define the blank rows. So we'll hit enter and tab, and we're going to declare a variable called blank capital R rows, and we'll set that equal to max row minus last row. Add a semicolon, hit enter twice, two slashes for a comment, and hit logging. We'll hit enter and tab, and we'll do logger.log, open parentheses, blank capital R rows. We'll have the right arrow on our keyboard and add a semicolon. So when we hit run, you'll see that we'll get 9, 1,010, and then we'll get 1,001. So now we have all the data that we need in order to delete our rows. So we're going to resume on line 25. We're going to hit enter twice, hit the left arrow four times, add two slashes for a comment, and now we will remove the blank rows. So we'll hit enter and tab, and we will do sheet.delete rows, open parentheses. So the first value that we're going to enter is last capital R row. But it's important to note in the documentation that the way that delete rows is structured is the first value is your starting position. So you can see here it says rows start at one. This deletes the first two rows. So because they entered in one comma two, they start at row one and delete one, two rows. So we're going to want to modify our last row variable by hitting space plus sign space one. So we're gonna add one to last row. That way, instead of starting at the last row and then deleting rows, we are going to start at the first blank row. And we are getting that logically by getting the last row with non-null values, adding one to it to then get the first row with null values. And then we're going to use our blank rows variable in order to identify the number of rows that we need to delete starting at the first null row. So we're going to add a comma after our last row plus one, and then we are going to pass blank rows. We're going to hit the right arrow on our keyboard and add a semicolon. We're going to save our project, and we're going to hit run. You can see that we have no errors, and when we go back to our sheet, you can see that now we have deleted all of our blank rows. However, our logic now breaks down if we try to run it again. And the reason for that is because we do not have a 10th row in our sheet, right? So we have nine rows in here, and we are saying start at row 10 and delete the blank rows. And it can't do that. So we're going to add in some error management. We're going to hit enter on line 27, and we're going to enter try. We're going to have curly brackets, and we're going to hit the right arrow on our keyboard. We're going to hit enter. We're now going to pass in catch, and we're going to have another set of curly brackets. Try catch is Google Apps Scripts and JavaScript's version of if error. So if you've ever used if error in a spreadsheet, it allows you to run some logic or a function or whatever. And if you get an error, then you have an ability to change the output from an error message to some type of custom protocol. In the case of try catch, it allows us to attempt or try to run some logic. And if there is an error, it is caught so that the rest of the script can complete. So when we tried to run sheet.getDeleteRows, we got an error, uh, we got an exception error because there are rows out of bounds. So we're gonna copy line 30, we're gonna delete it, we're gonna select in, bet in between try, the curly brackets, we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna paste it in. And now when we hit run, we still get the same output, but our script compiles without error and our data set remains unchanged. 
So that is working exactly as we want it to. And what we'll do is we'll click in between catch and we'll hit enter and we'll add a log statement so that we know that it happened. So we can say the this caught an error and we'll add an exclamation point. So now when we hit run, you can see that we caught an error. So we're gonna resume on line 33. We're gonna hit enter twice. And now we are going to insert a row at the bottom of our data. So we'll hit enter and tab and we will reference our sheet and we will use dot and then we will do insert rows after. And then we're gonna have an open parenthesis. So this works the same way as um, our um, delete rows method. However, this um, inserts rows after your starting position. So in this case, we can use last row, we can use a comma, and then we can enter in as many rows as we want to. So I'm gonna do comma one. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want just a little bit of padding. You know, I don't want a thousand blank rows, but I don't want no rows. So we're going to delete all of our blank rows and then we are going to add in one. So we're gonna run our script. And you can see that it completes without error. And when we go back in here, you can see we now have one row at the bottom of our sheet. Uh, so if we try to run our script again, you'll see that we actually deleted one row, um, but because of our logic system, we inserted another row. So now we have a logical way to always make sure that there is one row at the bottom of our sheet and that we are removing excess rows. So now we're going to uh, do the same thing for uh, columns. So we're going to hide the last row variable. We're going to hide the max row variable. Blank rows are going to get hidden. Our um, try catch is going to be hidden in here. And we are going to start at line 36. We're going to hit enter twice, hit the left arrow on our keyboard twice, and we'll collapse line 35. Because Oh, sorry, we won't do that. Uh, so we will start on line 38. And now we will define the last column. So we'll hit enter. I'm going to fix my typo. Um, we'll declare a variable of last column. And oops, sorry. And we will set it equal to sheet dot get capital L last column with an open parentheses. We'll hit the right arrow, add a semicolon, hit enter twice, hit the left arrow twice, two slashes for a comment, define the max column. So we'll hit enter and tab and we'll declare a variable of max column. And we will set it equal to sheet dot get max columns, open parentheses. We'll hit the right arrow on our keyboard, add a semicolon, hit enter twice, hit the left arrow twice. Now we will define the number of blank rows, hit enter, tab, var, oh sorry, columns, blank, capital C, L, O, U, M, N, S, equal to max column minus last column, parentheses. I'm going to change my comment so it's correct. We're going to hit enter twice. We will remove the blank columns. We're going to hit enter and tab, and we'll use our try curly brackets. Hit enter, and we'll do sheet dot delete columns, open parentheses. Same thing where it, it starts, it deletes things at the starting position. So we'll do last column plus one comma and then we will pass in our blank columns variable. We'll hit the down arrow once, we'll hit enter, and now we will do our catch, and we will do open curly brackets, we'll hit enter, and we'll do logger.log, open parentheses, single quote, an error has been caught, exclamation point. Hit the down arrow, oops, sorry, hit uh, the right arrow twice, hit the down arrow twice, hit enter once, Hit the left arrow on your keyboard four times, two slashes for a comment, and now we will add in a column. We'll hit enter and tab. We'll do sheet dot insert columns after open parentheses, last column, comma one. Hit the right arrow, add a semicolon, save your project, and let's see what happens. Cool, so this compiled without any errors. 
And now you can see we have one blank row, one blank column. We attempt to run our script again. We have no errors, one blank row, one blank column. Cool. So this is working exactly as we wanted to. This is going to provide us with a programmatic way to consistently have one blank row and one blank column. I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to learn more about Google Apps Script or the Spreadsheet app, then check out the playlist in the description.